All right, guys, um, in case you know me, I'm uh, Ken Brochart, been here for a long time now, but uh, been fortunate to be along with the, uh, from the club program to the varsity, and uh, you know, one thing that when I got here, one of the biggest things that I, I think I brought in was uh, the 10-man ride, something I, we ran at New York Tech, where I played at, and um, you know, it's something that we always get you know, calls about, emails about, and it's something I really recommend that you look at Seriously, especially at high school level, lower level, um, you know, let's be honest. You know, we spent, we talked a lot about stick work and everything like that. Deep poles don't have the stick work to handle a 10-man ride most of the time. And, uh, you know, even at our level, it is a little risky, but, you know, you'll see it really is. It benefits us a lot when we do it. Um, we kind of pick and choose our times nowadays when we do the 10-man ride. Um, but, you know, the times that we do it, we get a lot of turnovers. So just want to get into it here. Um, so basically, what is the 10-man ride? You know, more or less, just in the simplest form, what we're doing is we're just taking the deep hole, we're taking the goalie out of the cage, okay, and then we're taking the deep hole, we're bringing him up to the midfield line to cover one of the mids. So it's more or less just 10 on 10, and, uh, you know, in the simplest, you can do it. There's different types of 10-man rides, okay, and I'm going to take you through what we call 100 and the 100 ride is basically the all-out, you know, press everywhere ride, okay? We kind of named this, I think this came from New York Tech, but it's more or less kind of, you know, 90s a little bit less, 80s a little bit less, and then 10 we threw in because so many teams knew that we were running a 10-man ride. We started making this call 10 that it was a fake 10-man ride. But more or less, the 100, it's all-out pressure. The 90, we just bring one attackman back. Okay, and the 80 we bring two attackmen back. They're more of zone rides. So I'll take you through the 100 today, but you know, feel free to you know shoot me an email about the 90 or 80 or even the 10. <clears throat> so the way I want to take you guys through this is more or less just go by the rules, and then from the rules we'll kind of build it. Um, you know, these were written a while back. Okay, but um, we run it a little bit different than some teams run it. Right, and this is really how you should break it down and teach it to your team, right? First thing here, okay, if they're out to a deep hole, we have our attackman, deep hole's got the ball, we can't get beat down low, all right? That's the first, the, one of the most important things we could go through, okay? If we get run by down low, right, obviously we're going to have to then slide to that deep hole, and all of a sudden now we just lost our 10 on 10 advantage. So a couple things we want to talk about is, and you'll see I'll have a couple of drills for you. You have to teach your attackman how to play defense a little bit, okay? And it's not just go out and this is one hand check. You know, one of the rules is keep two hands on your stick. But uh, from there, all right, just to kind of draw what they're in here, they have their D. We have our other attackman here on the goalie, right? Our last attackman, okay, and this is the one thing that's a little bit different, is we actually take this attackman and throw him back near the midfield line. Okay, and what that does is you have to understand is that we're going to have to keep a guy back on sides, all right, and as I build this up for you. So, uh, you know, number three there, all right, our middies, and generally we have, if this is box side, right, we have a mid over here. <coughs> He's here on a guy. All right, I'll just put a circle around them. All right, and then the other mid, right, is back on this side, and we're going to you know, but basically what you want to do is keep everyone in front of you, okay? Either you're locked off, locked off would be great, right? But let's be honest, there's, you know, 110 yards and 60 yards. It's hard to cover guys and lock them off, right? So we're going to talk about a little bit of how you could be near guys and how you could play spaces, right? And I want you guys to think a little bit about football and how, you know, in football, you think of a defense, how they're just kind of covering space sometimes, right? And they zone up. Um, a lot of our Man, even though it's a 10-man ride, we're 10 on 10, a lot of the stuff we do is kind of his own principles in this. So from there, we're going to bring it, one of the D guys over, okay? He's going to step over, right? This mid here will step back. And let's just say, for argument's sake, they're in a 3-4 ride, right? They have their other mid here, okay? This D guy who comes over, we like to call him the hawk, right? This hawk's going to step over in the middle, and then our last guy in, right, is our long stick who we sub one of the guys out, a long stick comes in, and we get our LSM right there. So this is more or less the setup down low, 
all right? Um, far side, mid, back on sides, all right? So that's this guy right here. Make sure he's back on sides, and then we actually pinch him in a little bit into the center. <clears throat> From there, okay, and then just to draw it down, down below, this is how we kind of take the goalie out. Ball's here, right? They say they throw this way right away. Just say their attack is like this, right? We're gonna put a deep hole, make sure you're above the ball, one out, one out here, and then our goalie's about right there, right? That's pretty important. You have to think about, when we start talking about covering space, you know, say even this attackman's a little bit wider, okay, this is a, you know, 90 yard pass. We don't need this guy on top of him, okay? So, <clears throat> more or less, they come out and they'll rotate, always leaving the goalie to cover the furthest away from the ball, or if this guy's hanging out near the cage, or he's behind the cage for some reason, we'll put him behind the cage. All right, he'll cover that guy. <clears throat> um, from there, right, the uh, couple of the other rules in here, right, you don't want the, if you're the attack, anytime it, the ball gets by you, so say they throw it down in here, you gotta chase from behind. We're gonna talk about kinda how you take the ball away here, but that's really important that, and you have to set the culture and practice with your attack, you can't have that one lazy attackman, all right? We have a couple, you know, we've had through the years who they throw the ball away here or something like that. The guy gets beat and they just hang out, right? We always say, toe, you know, toe the line. Make sure you, you end every ride. If they clear it, and they're going to clear it sometimes, right? But if they clear it, I should see all three of my attackmen up at the line. <clears throat> um, and then, uh, you know, as it's getting cleared, right? So just for instance, say they throw and they end up throwing it deep, okay, or say this guy kind of caught it inside and he did beat us, right? If he beats us here, our goalie now is going to get in. They got this guy who's open, right? We got to get these guys down the back pipes, right? So we have a D out, D out, and then here's our other D is way out of position, right? So we really got to cover up this back pipe, right? So this guy's got to get in, right? This long stick's got to get in backside. Really important there. And then, um, you know, and then if the short stick starts with the ball. So let's just say this guy was a short stick, right? We would just scrape off the goalie, double team this guy, right? So he's gonna give it back to the goalie, and then he goes, okay? He goes over and we would just stay on the lock here, right? I think a lot of people make the mistake by bringing a midfielder down, right? To double the ball. And if you did that, all you're gonna do is just leave more space in the middle of the field, right? When we do run our 10 man, what we're really doing is really compressing the middle of the field, you ha you're adding an extra guy, right? So if they start bringing the ball up in here, now we have seven, right? And they have, you know, they have seven too, but there's a lot of guys in a, you know, maybe 30, 40 yard space. So it's not a lot to run out with. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a look on a couple of the other things that we go over with it, All right? So here's our ride, okay? And you can kind of see we have the guy up on the ball, right? There's our hawk in the middle. That's what I drew up for you guys there. Right? Also notice the guys down low covering space at the, all the way over. All right? So when the ball is thrown on and over, okay, this is really the, the big key. We have to get our backside midi, who's now on the opposite side, he's got to get back on sides, and that attack's got to go. So it's kind of this push-pull. Right? The one side gets back on sides, right? and then the other side, the mid starts coming over. Once he gets up there, he'll release that attackman now to step up and play the ball. So it's not like they just throw an overpass, everyone jumps up, because if they do that, they're just gonna bring all their guys low. We can't bring one guy over, and then that guy will be open. So, um, and then from there, right, if they throw, that's just the D guys, how they would rotate that. And then if they throw in the middle, right, and this is how we take the ball away, we call it, you wanna plug, right? Make him make one move, turn him once, right? You don't want that long stick in the middle just throwing an over the head check, and then running right down the middle of the field. We want to just turn him once. So we have long sticks. Keep two hands on your stick. If you could turn him back, by the time you turn him back, right, hopefully he rolls back. When he rolls back, there come the two attackmen chasing, and that's how we take that ball away. All right? It's really like gang tackling in, in football. A um, couple coaching points, okay? This is the most important one. When I first got here, I actually, you know, was coaching offense when I came in here because we had a defensive coordinator. And I'm telling you, in the 10-man, you will give up goals. You will give up an easy goal. You know, hopefully it's only, you know, one every third game. I think that's probably uh, pretty safe for the ratio, right, coach? And, uh, you know, but you're going to give up an, an easy goal or an easy opportunity at times. 
All right, you have to be bought in. Everyone on the team, right? Everyone, you know, who's doing it, all the coaches. And when I first got here, you know, I brought it over, and the defense coach absolutely hated it. All right, it took a while for us to put in this ride. And once we did, we did really well. But um, it's, it's tough, right? Now I'm obviously on the defensive side of the ball, and I see it. You know, you never want to give up an easy goal, all right? But you have to look at, you know, how many guys here follow their clear percentage in a game? They want to keep that track. You should, you know, start to keep some of these easy numbers if you can do it. But if you have that clear percentage, when we got at our best, right, we were riding, you know, and this was at the club level, which is probably pretty comparable to some of you guys, right? We were riding close to 50%, which is unheard of, right? It was, it was unbelievable. We would go into games knowing that we were going to ride around 50%, right? We knew we were going to win about 80 to 90% of face-offs at that time, and we had a good goalie. Right there alone, we didn't have to do much else right. We knew we were going to win. Just the amount of opportunities that we got by this ride, our possessions were you know, so different that even if we had a bad day, there was no way that this other team could play with us. So everyone's really got to be bought in. Um, you know, you got to step up the field, okay? And this is going to be hard to teach because everything that you're taught, especially riding, is don't slide up the field, right? Um, if it's thrown in front, right, let's say it's one of the guys out on the wings over here. Say this guy right here, you know, it's thrown here in front, and this guy catches and squares him up. You don't want him to be able to square you up and have time to break either way. You have to step up and get into his body and make him turn back, okay? And we call that plugging. So really important that you actually step up the field and plug the gaps. <clears throat> you don't retreat. Um, cover space, okay, in any ride you do, right? And we're, right now we're running, we're also running a 3-3 a three, three float at Michigan, okay? And it's one of the principles is covering space, right? And I talked a little bit about it on, you know, that long pass from the goalie, from the one side D to the goalie, but it's everywhere. It's, you know, right here, you don't have to be right on top of this guy. You know, if it's 40 yards, you could be six yards away from the guy. If they guy throws 40 yards, I could get there in time. Okay, and by covering space and sometimes being where you think they're going to break to, right, or where they're looking to throw the ball to, you could cover more space, right, and you're going to take that away. Okay, and you could kind of dictate which way the clear is going to go. So that's really important, especially, you know, down low here, really important that you're over on this side, these guys being down, this attackman being back, okay. He doesn't have to be back all the way on this midi. He could be back maybe halfway. They throw that up and over. He could turn and chase and get there. Um, you know, finish with toes to the line. I spoke about that, all right? You know, one thing I used to, we used to do in practice with guys, if they broke a, it was kind of like a fundamental. They break a fundamental, they don't hustle after a GB, um, anything like that. We would give them, we used to call it numbers, right? We'd make them run around the field. We would basically say the guy's name and make him run around the field, you know, in 60 seconds. And, you know, in college, it was something I brought from my college. Jack Cayley did it all the time, and he would just tell you. He would call your name out, and there'd be guys running around the whole time. But it instilled this type of discipline, and this is the way we need to play all the time, right? We, there's no such thing as in practice of taking a, a, you know, a playoff, okay? And there's something that gets overlooked, and we do it. We're also victims of it. When you go six on six in practice, you should clear a lot. Okay? There's sometimes when you get so caught on, you want to work on your offense and your six on six, right, that you lose these little things on riding. Okay? And you don't, that's, that's good riding right there and good clearing right there. All right? And it often, you know, goes overlooked because you're so worried on that one thing on the six on six. Um, goalie cannot retreat. This is him pretty much buying in. The goalie will be stuck at times. All right? For instance, right here. Okay? Here's our goalie coming halfway out. If they swing this ball quick and this guy starts coming up, he's got to go, okay, right? This guy, just say we didn't get this rotation, right? And the goalie's right here. They swing the ball. This guy starts coming up to here. He's got he's to be willing to go, all right? Yeah, we would love him. We would love for this guy to get over, this guy to get over and kind of pass them off and keep him as close as we can there. But there's times, like I said, you have to sell out, all right? If our goalie retreats right here and they throw to him, it's a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie in the cage, and it's probably a goal. And that happened, that probably happens a lot in the beginning, all right? You gotta really kind of buy into that. <clears throat> um, 
Keep two hands on your stick. These are just common rules, I think, for attackmen and for middies when they ride. Okay, keep two hands on your stick. I know, I get it when a guy gets by you that this does work. Okay, but most of the time, a lot of times it is a penalty. Okay, a lot of times that's where you'll see. We never want a penalty from the offensive guy on our team. All right, so keep two hands on your stick, two hands there, and turn. And the, one of the principles here is obviously turning the guy wanting to ride. So make sure that you're not, you know, letting these guys just go one hand hatchets all over the place. Um, and then also never jump. Okay, um, you're going to be coming. You're going to be running at a D guy, and he's going to be looking up the field. Do not jump. You lose your feet. He's going right by you. Okay, and that's rule number one was don't get beat by by your. Uh, don't let an attackman get beat. Um, you know, keep the heat on, okay? Um, that's pretty important. It's like they're going to move it back and forth, and you're going to start getting more towards the midfield line. That Sometimes they'll, they'll throw to a guy inside here. So they'll, you know, they'll throw up in here, right, and then they'll throw it back. When they throw it back, okay, don't let that goalie or that defenseman survey. You've got to start stepping up the field, right? And that what I mean is you've got to start stepping up here. You can't let this guy just hold it forever and survey because he's going to find those guys down low. All right? Let's be honest. This is a lot of room to cover these three attackmen. Okay? You have to keep that heat on those D guys. They should be looking, getting guys, and throwing overpasses. And if you do this right, what will happen is you're going to end up with deep holes throwing overpasses, right? and then deep holes, eventually, you could just jet it. You could just go early on it and get it right up here, right in his face as he's catching it. And now think about some of the deep holes that you've gone against, you know, or you go against all the time with the deep holes on your team. I know on our team, they would have a lot of trouble with that if you get it right away. <clears throat> all right, so a couple drills I want to take you through. Um, this one more or less just to teach the attack, and I talked about it all the time. Simple, cones on the side, right? Just going to have, we, sometimes we have the goalies throw it out to the D guy, all right? But more or less, it's just the attackman getting there, breaking down. Right? You want to use the sideline as your extra guy. So you want to use the sideline, but you can't get beat. So you want to use it for a little bit, cut them off the sideline, turn them back. Okay? Um, you know, really important. We, we do this, you know, usually when we teach it, we'll have one day where we do two or three drills just to make sure our attack kind of gets it on how they should approach. Right? So they would just come out, approach, and then turn that guy at the sideline. Okay? And if you do that, he's then going to have to throw back to the goalie. Now the goalie's shut off. Okay, and they have to throw, you know, he has to throw an overpass. And now he's throwing an overpass with maybe a guy jumping up on the other side. <clears throat> um, another one we do, right, plug the hole. This goes into that, that whole thing of sliding upfield, okay, and getting used to sliding upfield and stopping a guy and turning him back. So same thing, kind of like an Oklahoma drill here, right, just one-on-one. -on -one, you get about, how, how far do you think this is, 10 yards, Coach? The, the far apart? No, the cones, between the cones. Okay. About ten, about 10 yards, right? And he's just got to turn him once within these 10 yards, right? So he just comes up, turns him, okay, and he, does his, he did his job. If he could turn him once, we should have those attackmen coming down on him. <clears throat> All right, here's a couple with film. All right, and this is just three-quarter field. Okay, you can kind of take you through. You can kind of see. This is just we don't put any, any D or, uh, or attack in there or the goalie, but we do have our hawk up there. So they're kind of taking it back and forth, right? And you can kind of start to see as we go through this, some of this gang tackling we talk about, <clears throat> stopping the guy, right? And you can even see this one. I mean, that's, you know, that happens sometimes right there. We're going to call Geronimo and get back in the hole as soon as they cross over. All right, here's another one. Again, really important in the beginning to get in the goalie's face. That was something Casey brought up in his. That's, you know, any ride you're doing, Right away, you don't want to give up anything over the top, get in the goalie's face. And then from there, you see how our guy on the goalie, he's not really locked on, right? He's kind of close enough that they're not going to throw to the goalie, but he could also get back and help out. This is a ridiculous play that he still has the ball here. <clears throat> All right, and that's going to happen. And on the college level, it's going to happen a lot more than on the high school level. All right, just a couple more. <clears throat> Getting into the face. All right, you see there, number five, he's kind of hanging out near the goalie. This way, they got to throw that over. We start getting that push-pull. See that push-pull on the side? And now we can start stepping up. All right, now here comes the heat. All right, he doesn't have much to go to. Trying to find guys. 
right? Throws it into traffic. We want them to throw it into the middle of the field because that's where we have all our guys, right? Turn them away, <clears throat> right? And there's our takeaway, all right? And then obviously you want to try to push after that takeaway. That's the one thing that's really nice about this 10-man where most rides, you're taking the ball away on your defensive half. On this ride, you actually take the ball away on their defensive half. So you could really, you know, get after them pretty good if you get that turnover. All right. Um, then from there, we will go. So that's the whole progression. We'll go those two, three-quarter field. Then we start, we start getting into the full field. <clears throat> and full field is just kind of live skelly. We run from both ends. We, you know, just have a guy kind of, they run their offense. They fake shoot it, kind of gets up into it. Again, you can kind of see here, locking off, throws across. Now we're starting to put the heat on. All right, here he kind of gets beat for a second. We're lucky this is a slow defenseman on our team, right? But here's the takeaway. We're trailing, toes to the line. All right, and then look at all that room. Why don't you take that ball away? All right, he didn't shoot that. I don't know why, but. All right, a couple more here. All right. Kind of see they, uh, how they step up, right? Double team, being disciplined, right? That one, they actually left that guy for a second. But again, they lose it. They're putting a lot of pressure on the deep poles here. And then last one, here's one with the short stick starting with the ball. So there's that scrape off, right? We're doubling. There's the scrape. And then the attackman starts getting back into the play. He's matched up, and now we're full go. see there we get a good, really good opportunity all right so from there you know and then we, we get into games and uh, you know this was last year versus Mercer obviously it works really well in Oosterbahn all right I'm sure you guys might know why it's uh, we play it's a shorter field okay so it's not as wide which you know it's what's it three and a half or four yards on each side so it really squeezes guys um, helps us cover more space but here's a couple clips from how when we implemented it we went into Ustaban here right away. Here's another one with them. That's often the answer for a lot of guys is to bring, you know, a short stick down to run it out, right? You see we scrape off. Now we're going to the goalie. Again, we don't mind if they throw it into the middle. See how we're kind of baiting them to throw it to the middle? Here they are. We got three guys on the ball, and we get that turnover. All right, and I don't know how much you guys know, but the, uh, on the D1 level, Getting any, you know, if we could go two or three turnovers in a game off our ride, that's huge. Here we are, stepped up. All right, I was kind of mad that guy caught the ball there. But again, like, puts lots of pressure on him. Now we're getting it. All right, we're coming down, looking for a good shot. All right, this one's a little bit different. We're kind of laid off a little bit. They started up high. We let them throw back. Again, get that turnover on the, on the D guy. And then last one here, they're starting behind. We, we don't want that ball in the goalie's hands. I think that's one of the, another really important key. We really don't want them, you know, going through the goalie because he could see either side of the field, right? If it stays to one side, you can kind of overload that side and you force that overpass. When it goes back through the goalie, it makes it pretty tough. All right. All right, just some further things, you know, uh, I thought it would be good to discuss. Um, you know, how do you get into it off the save, all right? Basically, the, the key is off the save is you want them to throw down to one of these two D guys, right? Here's the D. So what, what we would do is we would put a guy in the goalie's face right away, right? And the other two attack, when we would actually drop to try to find those mids, right? And drop back towards the, towards the midfield line. To make it easy for you guys, you could really just drop one attack back here, right? And the other attack back here. And then once they're forced to throw down, then this guy goes. This guy's already back where he needs to be, okay? Um, also, the one real key about that as well, we call opposite box side Frisco. So on the Frisco side, you want to make sure that you keep one of your middies back, okay, right away. If he could get back right away, he's going to release that hawk to come up into the middle of the field and clog things up, all right? So getting him right, right off the shot, getting this midi back on sides, Right, which would be this guy back on sides to release him, 
all right, and kind of clog up that middle. And then getting your long stick in the middle as well. Um, so, you know, pretty good. We ran it all the time off shots. I don't think it's that hard to get into. But, and then uh, a couple other things, right? Best time to run the 10 man ride, all right? And you could obviously, if you buy into it, you could run it all the time, all right? For us right now, you know, we want to do it one of the first possessions in a game, right? So we want to do it either the first possession or maybe first possession of the second half, okay? They come out, they've worked on something. You know, just throwing that change up, that's a really good time to change your ride is right out of halftime, okay? Especially, you know, if, depending on how you're doing in the first half, they're probably working on that at, at halftime. Then you come in, you run, run into something totally different. Um, obviously, if you're down in a game, last year versus Air Force, I think we were down four goals, right? We came back, we almost tied it up. We had a shot with, I think, three seconds left, all right, to tie it up. Um, and then the other time that we found that is really, really effective, okay, is when a face-off win back, all right? Does anyone know why? Any guesses? They're trying to sub uh, both the LSM and the Pogo. Very good, right? They're subbing two guys off the field. So if they, fa if they face off, throw back, and we push down now with all three of our attackmen, and we bring that hawk over, right, and we keep our long stick on, right, they're going to be subbing. They can't get their guys on in time and you could basically get a turnover right there. So that's probably, when you see us this year, you know, we'll probably do that most of the time, right, off face, face off win back. A um, couple other things, right, um, you know, so obviously the question is, we just went over the 10-man ride for a while now, you know, how do you beat a 10-man ride, okay, and I think, you know, a lot of people have gone over it through the years, and I think we have some of the best knowledge because we ran it for so long. Um, it used to be, back in the day, it used to be bring all the guys down, Right, because now they have you have seven guys. They can only bring six over. Someone's going to be open. Well, that's one of the reasons we brought that midfielder back on the opposite of the ball, um, and it really doesn't work because it just clogs things up. So you know, through the years, what they've done is they've actually usually thrown up to one of the mids, throw back, and when they throw back, they get some time to survey. Right, and down low is basically they shoot it out the cage, and I don't know. I don't know if anyone's a referee in here, but they call anything that's shot anywhere near the other side of the field as a shot. It could be, you know, 30 yards to the right, and they'll call it a shot. So what they would do is just bring all the attackmen, you know, kind of the attackmen up high, the one with the goalie up high, you know, and they would rotate them. But off the shot, you know, you just want to send your guy towards the back line, win the back line, and now it's a quick whistle, and you go. Okay? I... It, it kills us for it. Um, part of the reason why we really want to get up in the guy's face, um, you know, but it's, uh, it's unfortunate that they call all those a shot. You know, and then, um, you know, what ride would you do if they keep shooting? So say they are doing that now, right? So we talked about, you know, we have the 10-man ride. They come into the game, and now they, they notice we're in a 10-man ride, and they just keep shooting it. Maybe we're getting some, but it's really when we're not getting it, they're picking it up, and now it's a bad situation for us. What do we do? Okay, so the one thing that we, and I opened up with it, is we call 10. And basically what 10 is, is the first midfielder outside the box, right? You still bring your hawk up, right? But that midi who comes out of the box that usually stays near the box, he's going to go deep, right? You can still bring your goalie out a little bit, right? So if I, I was to show you here, this mid who's right here, This mini who would generally come right here, you're just going to send him deep, right, on their attackman, okay? And our goalie still hangs out outside of the cage because you want to disguise it, right? But he's now he's close enough to the cage that if they shoot it, he's going to be the guy who has the backup, right? Cause every, and now everyone else is locked on. You don't have to rotate. You don't have to worry about anything like that, okay? And what you do is you, just have, you only have three guys here now, so you just play a little bit softer with your attack. Right? Instead of the attack really pushing up, because remember, they, they know we're in a 10-man, we were pressing. They know that. Now they're, now they're surveying down the field, right? and they've been shooting it like crazy. So now we go into this 10, right? we, and here we actually want to stay kind of behind these guys so we can make sure we get the back line sometimes. But you just bring this midfielder down, we're all matched up, and it's basically a 9-man ride. Okay? It's a 9-man kind of sloughed off ride, something that you guys probably do all the time. Right? The, the key is, though, you still bring the hawk up. So they think it's a 10-man. You still bring the goalie out a little bit. You just send that first midfielder deep. So, and uh, that's...
pretty much it. You guys, any questions? Sure. Uh, he's just pretty much checking down the line. The one thing that the quarterback of it is the Hawk, right? And, and we drew this just out of one, basically one clear, right? This is more or less the easiest clear to kind of, you know, demonstrate it. But the Hawk is the guy who's going to kind of dictate those guys going back and forth. But they got to check. And this one here, those two middies, right, who are on the push-pull, they just got to check that the guy's on side. The brilliant thing about this is, I don't know what it is, but Officials are really focused on going off sides the other way. There was plenty of times that we've run this where we've been off sides and they haven't called it. It's amazing how much officials miss that. Okay, it's it's it happens all the time. But it's uh you know, but I think that's the communication back and forth. The other big communicator is when they do throw this overpass, right, that this attackman doesn't release, he waits for this MIDI to come over and bump him, right? And bump. Right, bump up. Because you always rather cover deep than come up early and make them just throw to the mid and he runs it out. So, good question. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you still, uh, like, are you matching speed as far as like scouting goes there? Like, say, you know, mid's not providing and they're coming up. <coughs> uh, a little bit. It follows a little more zone principle than most people think. You know, we, we won't bring guys all the way down. And if guys come out, they come out. The one thing, you know, off a shot, Right, we talk about we keep the one O mid on Frisco side. The other guys, most, I would say, a majority of teams, you know, are going to sub a deep hole and a long stick, right? So if they could sub those two, we could probably get our long stick in and our midi in. And that's how, that's kind of how we get our guys in. We often have to sub that O mid later on. And, we, and that's once they clear, then we'll marry the guy and come out. For us to go on offense? Yeah, so like if you guys are doing this line <coughs> yep. and uh, they, have, they, they have to get their own minutes or their... Uh, they do that going on their ride. They no, do that. I know, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about like a flip situation. So like, you're saying they, they, they put three, they want to get like their own minutes on three five. Yeah. yeah, okay. Do you, do you recognize that and then try to jump it like right away? Yeah, I mean, you could go three. I mean, a lot of teams in D1, regardless of the 10-man ride, anytime they lose it on the back line, usually is a three-down situation. Right, and that's that's just something where if you notice that they're not using these guys, and we have support over the top, right? For instance, sometimes there's no one in here, and the hawk can kind of hang back on this side, right? If he can hang back on this side, we don't need this midi to be back on side. He could step up, and this attackman can step up and go three down, and three down is the best situation you could have, right? Because now you got the deep hole one on one. He doesn't have the goalie to throw to. He doesn't have the other defense to throw to. Yeah, and gets it. No, it doesn't. Oh, get it. and doesn't he get, get it. it. He doesn't get it. He gets five seconds to get back in the crease before the they, before the official will restart. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Do you have any issues where they don't um, need their poles low? They put their poles high, so you're dealing with shorties on that over. So then you have like attackmen and middies, and it's not exactly a time to do a double team. Yeah, what we would do there is we would, if they brought two shorts down low, right, we would double team here, leave the goalie, and we would lock here, okay? And then we would just play a lot softer up top because if they have the poles, we actually want them, remember, we want them to throw in this area right here, right? We want them to throw here. So instead of bringing this guy, you know, since we have to lock on this mid, right, with an attackman, okay, instead of bringing this, we don't really have the help back on this midi who's over because this guy has to be over, this guy will kind of split two. That long stick midi for us will split two back here and kind of help out on that. Right? Because remember, now this is probably a deep hole or one of these two is probably a deep hole. Unless they're clearing with six shorts, which would be pretty smart to do. So, yep. Anything else? Oh, okay. so, anything else? All right. Thank you.